kidding and lambing season is almost here. I can hardly wait to see baby goats and little baby lambs hopping about the homestead, playing with their little brothers and sisters and their little friends. This time makes me really excited, really anxious, and really nervous. In the weeks before the due date, there is so much that we do just behind the scenes to help prepare the moms to give birth. This time of preparation, it really reminds me of the times in my life where so much work is being done, but none of it is really noticed. Because let's be honest, this world does not hand out trophies for the unseen work that God does in our lives. There's actually a huge difference to what God sees and to what culture sees, right? This world looks at things like subscriber counts and how many followers you have and likes and if you have the perfect feed and if you have the perfect filter and if you have the best presets, that's what this world looks at. And to be honest with you, one of my biggest temptations is the temptation to be seen by others. It's really forced me to ask myself the question, how many things in my life am I doing just to be seen? And answering this question has helped me to prioritize the things in my life that I value the most. What I've noticed is that when I do something only to be seen by others, and then those other people don't see it and don't recognize it, then it actually kills my creativity and it causes major discouragement whether it be in my homeschooling, in my business, in my online business, whatever it may be, my uniqueness has now been lost and missed because of that discouragement. So just like all of this work that's being done behind the scenes to prepare our sheep and to prepare our goats for kidding and for lambing, it's the same thing in our life with just preparing for something big to happen in our life. Um, we do a lot leading up to the birth, usually starting at about five weeks before the birth of the sheep or of the goat. We do a lot to just make sure that the baby goat or the baby lamb and then the mom is gonna be super healthy. We do things like making sure their hooves are trimmed, um, we give them a nice Brazilian trim just to make the cleanup easier after they have their babies. Um, we make sure that we check for worms. And the way that we check for worms is using the FAMACHA method where you are looking at their eyes and into their eyelids. And that is a really good way to see if they're anemic. We also give any necessary shots five weeks prior to giving birth. This way the immunity of the shots passes to the baby and we don't have to give the baby that shot right away. We make sure to clean out stalls, to stock the uh, mangers with hay, to have everything ready in the birthing stall so that we don't have to kind of pull our hair out during the labor and during the delivery. Another thing that we do is we have a birthing kit that we set up, and this includes all the essentials that we need or could possibly imagine that we need during labor and delivery. Hello everyone. I'm gonna show you what's in our goat and sheep birthing kit. They're pretty much the same, so whether you have goats or sheep or both, you might wanna have these items in your kit. So the most important thing in your kit is paper towels. We use about one roll per mom who's giving birth. Um, these are used to help remove some of the, you know, the fluid that's on them, to clear their nose, to clear their eyes, um, but it's an essential part. So we, we kind of estimate about one roll per goat. Next, we have um, several towels. These are great for just helping to get some of the um, the liquid that's off the baby, just to help remove some of the stuff that's all over them. Um, it's a great way to dry them off completely, especially if you're in a region where it's 
you know, a little bit chilly when they're giving birth or around their due date, you want to make sure that you get as get them as dry as possible. Mom does a lot of the work, um, so especially if they give birth in the middle of the night or while you're away, goats and sheep tend to do that, then don't stress, don't worry about it, but just have several old towels on hand so that you can help dry the babies off. So you're gonna need something to put all those towels, all those rags, all the paper towels in. And I take, um, in my kit, I have these big black bags. So I like to put in these bags, I like to put um, the towels that I'm gonna bring inside to wash off. Um, I put anything that I'm keeping in these black bags and I take them inside the house and do a load of laundry immediately afterwards. So for anything that you aren't going to keep and don't need to do laundry with, like the paper towels, the used towels, or you know, you might have to gather the placenta, um, I like to use old feed bags. So in these old feed bags, I put anything that I'm going to dispose of in the trash can. You can roll it up, it's super easy, very handy, so just make sure that you have a few, a few feed bags on hand during the birth. Feed bags are also great to put underneath the mom in the labor uh, area. You're able to, they're, they're able to kind of give birth on the bags. It kind of keeps everything together, keeps everything dry, helps you gather all the mess up um, immediately after. So feed bags are just handy to have on hand for several reasons. Another thing I like to have in our birthing kit is gloves. So we keep these gloves on hand just in case we need to help assist mom in any way. You know, if she's having um, a struggle pushing the baby out, if the baby's in a bad position, then we're able to put these gloves on and go in and help her. So with the gloves, we like to add a lubricant. So this is just a general lube um, that we got at the animal feed store. You can get them at most feed stores. Just have a lube on hand. It's really handy um, if you have to help assist the mom during birth. So in case the mom is struggling to feed the baby or there's some kind of issue with feeding and nursing the baby, you wanna have a bottle on hand. So we have found that the Prichard nipple, and it's these red and orange nipples that you can get at most animal feed stores, and all they do is they go on an empty bottle. Um, and so you just put the nipple on, you're able to put the milk inside, and it's a great thing to have on hand in case the mom and the baby are having a struggle um, establishing their nursing relationship. Okay, next is my favorite thing that we have. Um, these are little goat baby sweaters that were knitted, and these are wonderful to put on the baby afterwards if you're in a cold environment. I only like to put it on the baby when I'm around them just to see how cute they are. I don't like to leave it on the baby when I'm not around because I think that leaving it on the baby kind of ruins them with establishing their body temperature and just regulating their own body temperature. So we only put these sweaters on for the cuteness factor, but I know that several people use them in super cold environments just to keep the baby warm. Another thing that we love to have on hand for the mom, immediately following birth or maybe even during labor, we use um, blackstrap molasses and we just put a couple tablespoons into about a bucket, a gallon of water and warm water and the mom just absolutely loves it. It just gives her a great energy burst. It gives her some great minerals that she needs. Um, and so you can use honey as well if you don't have blackstrap molasses, but we, the, the moms, the goat moms and the sheep moms that I've you know, been accustomed to, they love molasses. And so get some molasses, your mamas are gonna thank you for that. You're gonna wanna have some dental floss on hand. I've never used this, okay? So, but it's necessary to have on hand in case the baby is still attached um, by the umbilical cord to the mom. You simply take a piece of the, cord, of the um, floss, you tie it around the umbilical cord, and then you break the cord on the mom's side, and then that keeps the baby from you know, losing some blood through the umbilical cord. So it's good to have on hand in case the cord doesn't break naturally. So 
Hemorrhoid cream is great in case the mom has a little bit of um, an issue with inflammation afterwards. Just add a little bit on to her and she'll thank you for that later. <laughs> a new item that I'm adding to our birthing kit this year are these position flashcards. Um, I printed this from an incredible website. They're hand drawn. I'll link it down below in the description. But this just tells you what to do with maybe a breech position. You know, it tells you what to do if they're coming out head back. Um, it tells you what to do if, let's see. Well, there's all different variety, normal presentation. Um, and so these are great. I laminated them, I cut them out. And these are great during labor when I see the baby presenting in a way that, you know, might not be normal. I can kind of look at my flashcards and it tells me how to assist, how to help guide the, the head out, how to maybe move the leg in a position that you need to. These are great. They don't come as flashcards. It's a blog post from a website that I'll link below, but these are handy to have on hand. So I like to have a flashlight in our birthing kit. So I have this little red one. And what this is for is when the baby starts to um, present itself, there's usually the sac, which is, you know, the bubble that it's in. And it's really hard to see what position the baby is in when they're in that sac. Um, a lot of the times it hasn't, you know, erupted yet or broken. And so I have found that if you take the flashlight and go up underneath the bottom of the sack, then you're able to really see where those hooves are. Um, you're able to see if there's a nose that's out and it just helps you with knowing the way that the baby is presenting so that you're able to, you know, sit back and watch or it lets you know if you need to assist in any way so flashlight is super handy to have two more things that i have in our birthing kit this is an aspirator in case you need to um, help the baby with fluid that's in its nostrils or in the back of its throat um, works just like a human um, aspirator in case you just have to squeeze and it sucks out the fluid so this we've used several times and i'm i'm glad that we keep this in our birthing kit and then the last item is this Nutri Drench. This is a vitamin supplement that's loaded with lots of really great vitamins um, and energy boosters. This is great to give a newborn in case they're, they're kind of just weak and floppy, they're not getting up quick. This, we just literally just kind of spray it directly into their mouth. Um, it does have dosage on the back and the brand is I believe the brand is just Goat Nutrigench, the nutritional advantage. So I hope that this video has helped you with some information on how to prepare your sheep and your goats for kidding and lambing season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, it's what we've all kind of waited for. There's nothing like seeing baby goats and little lambs hopping around the homestead all the fresh milk that comes from it, and just all the beauty that is created. So I hope that you have a successful and exciting lambing and kidding season. Please leave a comment below if you have questions. Like and subscribe. Like, oh, okay. Well, perfect. Come here. You can say it. Yeah, come here. You're all dressed for it. So I've got a little peeper over here who's been watching, and she's going to close it out for me. Go. Like and subscribe. Um, hit the bell button if you want to be notified for the next video. Bye. Perfect.